Our voices. Our stories. Our community. I think our goal from the beginning was always to give our guys an opportunity to participate in, in real work that had a real outcome, you know. Camp Hill is just that place you want to be. You get the serenity and the peacefulness and the, the scenery and it just, it's portrayed everywhere. Whenever we leave here, we are always going, wow, we just, still, after 25 years, are saying, we just can't believe how great this place is. There is a magic here, there's a spirit here that, that just naturally makes people relax and, and enjoy each other. The folks here are happy and everyone is just pleasant. So it's just a nice place to come and spend your day. It's been 42 years since uh, we first met these children with special needs who then became adults. And some of them we have lived together with or beside for all those years. And it's such a, a joy in our lives to still be connected and still grow old together with those we started with and to meet all the new young people who are coming and joining the community and finding their lives with us. My name's Diane Kitt, and I'm one of the founders of Camp Hill Communities Ontario. Right now, I'm sitting in my house in Barrie in the Sophia Creek neighborhood, because after living 10 years at the farm, and we realized some of our friends would prefer to live in town, we bought some neighborhood houses and uh, moved into town. I'm Chuck Kidd. I'm the co-founder of Camp Hill Ontario with, along with my wife Diane and uh, a couple of other very important people and uh, we began our um, work in 1986 and we haven't looked back. When we moved to the village there was a two-bedroom Inselbrook house on 300 acres and an old barn and we wondered how we were ever going to move 16 children and a couple of families up there to get started. And so we were lucky that we could purchase a couple of neighboring houses to the property so that we could all move up there while houses were built for us to live in. And we started the farm and garden even though we didn't really have a clue what we were doing. We managed to build five homes and a, a community center which was open and available to the public where we had a lot of um, performances, artistic activities, workshops in general, and um, uh, just a lot of really good, healthy community activities, including our craft fairs, which um, attracted a lot of attention and people. So over time, people got to know us. We also developed several workshops, uh, work areas where people could develop different kinds of skills. Uh, we developed a store in town here, which has become uh, quite a great resource because it puts us on the map. Suddenly people see a Camp Hill store. There's uh, some curiosity about what is a Camp Hill store. And people walk in and they find all these wonderful uh, items for sale. So usually when people come into the store, the first thing I do is ask if they know about Camp Hill. And if they don't, it gives me the opportunity to explain some of the amazing things that we do. I'm Catherine Killam, the store manager of the Camp Hill store, and we're downtown Barrie on a busy, rainy day. I've been with Camp Hill for just over ten and a half years now. I started doing residential work out in the village, so I've worked doing direct support in all of the houses, and then I came to Barrie about seven years ago. So I've done direct support there and I've been exploring different roles which landed me here at the Camp Hill store. So most of the products that we sell in the store are produced by adults with disabilities. Customers are forever picking up product and commenting on how exceptional and how beautiful it is and allows me the privilege to tell them the backstory of Camp Hill and of the artists who created the items that they're holding. A lot of them come from our workshops out in the village or here we have an art studio and a mosaic studio and a weavery in Barrie as well. And so we bring the product into the store to showcase the work that they've been doing. So some of the product we sell here at the store um, includes these wooden bowls which were made by Richard out at the wood shop. He uses the lathes to make them. Um, we have lots of pottery here including this is one of Sandra Chan's infamous bowls. She hand makes them by rolling 
little balls of clay and she presses them into a mold and then forms them into these beautiful bowls. The store acts as a hub, as a mediator of sorts between Camp Hill and what we do and connecting with the community. So we create a lot of these products and we'll bring them here where the community can come and access them. But beyond that, it allows us a space to not only tell our story, but also invite the public in. So we do different workshops here that include the public. Um, we also do partnerships with other organizations like CMHA, um, and we'll have exhibits here of different artists' work. So it, it acts as a meeting point. My name is Alan Kuhn, and we're here today at the Berry Farmer's Market. We're at the Camp Hill Farmer's Market stand. And we've been here for seven years. Today, it's one of the chillier days. It's the middle October. We have our market buskers, so you can hear a little bit of music. It is an urban scene, so we've got lots going on. And this is really cool for us because we can come off the farm and we get to meet customers and public and talk about Camp Hill and the stuff we do. So on our table, we've got wonderful colors. We have orange carrots. We have deep red beets. And we have earthy potatoes. And the potatoes are still covered in soil because they hold a lot better in storage that way. The Market Garden has been a program at Camp Hill for at least 10 years. Uh, gardening at Camp Hill is one of the foundational principles. One of the pillars of Camp Hill is an agricultural background. We produce our own food and we produce food for the market and for other, other things like community supported agriculture. I coordinate the Market Garden. Um, it's about five acres. It's a great thing. Um, it involves a lot of work during the week, so there's a lot of seeding, sowing, there's a lot of hoeing, there's a lot of weeding. However, at the end of the day, we get a lot of, a lot of nice rewards for it. Um, when somebody says, this is what I grew, and they actually get to eat it as well, doesn't it taste great? These things people make a connection with. They make a connection with the produce that they make and they make a connection with the customer. And then the customer makes a connection with Camp Hill, not only through the you know, theoretical idea of what we do, but through the actual food, or the nutrition. It's a really great way of expressing who we are. Our community will return after the break. We now return to our community. My name is Larry Palmer. I'm the Executive Director of Camp Hill Communities Ontario. And I'm talking to you from Novalis Hall in the basement uh, as we wrapped up our fair today. Semi-annually, we have an art and craft show. All the art produced in our therapeutic uh, artistic workshops by the people that we support here of, of various abilities. Pottery, woodworking, weavery, lots of good food, baking, uh, good organic vegetables. We invite the community, family and friends to come in and uh, buy and, and talk to us about the art here and what we do. And we had probably one of our better crowds today, three, maybe 400 people that came, came through today. And all the funds raised are uh, rededicated uh, to the artistic workshops or materials and supplies and we do have some partners in the community that bring their art to our festival as well. So it really has that sense of two communities coming together, sharing the gifts that we both have. Uh, and after a while, you can't tell the difference. We become one community uh, while people are here, friends and family and people we support. And as I say, we do a spring and fall fair. Fairs have been a tradition here at Camp Hill for probably 20, maybe 25 years. And it was originally uh, I think the value was to get closer to the community, to show them that what goes on here is uh, of value and the art that's produced here is something that the community would be interested in and in purchasing. And then we realized the community obviously has gifts that we need as well. And it's that interaction, that social interaction that we have with them, which is also important. Um, and of course, there are vendors that come in and share their art as well. So uh, it's that unity of one community together that's so important. Uh, it's great for us to make those engagements with the community and I think they benefit from, from learning about us as well. That's certainly the feedback we get from the various number of people that come to the, the festival fairs. My name is James Whittier and I'm the woodshop lead. We're here in the woodshop. 
We're below the office. This is where we do our uh, magic for woodworking. Uh, we have lots of tools on the walls and lots of machinery all over um, this room. Where we're standing was the original location of the barn um, until my father relocated it down to where it is now. I grew up not that far from here. My father was a timber framer, self-contractor, who went around locals knocking on farmhouse doors, getting to know everyone um, who needs help in neglected barns. We came here one day to see if they needed any help and fortunate enough, they did need to relocate a barn for the Highland cattle. And uh, my father was the right person for that job. And that's how I discovered Camp Hill. Here at Camp Hill, we, we source out our own lumber. We make a variety of uh, projects here. We make cutting boards, toast tongs, cheese boards, kids toys, cameras. We make musical instruments on the percussion side, drums, marimbas. Um, whoever is in here, we'd like to strive to what they liked to learn and do. My name is Richard Mulock, and I'm one of the assistants of Camp Orgobides, Ontario. I'm always happy to come to the wood workshop five mornings a week from Mondays to Fridays, nine o'clock to 12. I've been coming to this, I've been in this wood workshop for, 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 for over 20 years so far, when I started in 1995, and I was trying uh, um, other things. And I do do some wood turning on the lathe, making bowls or candle holders, etc. We have an old man of at least 90 years old that, that always likes to collect all the scraps and wants to glue them and make them into toast tongs. So naturally they need to be sanded. A couple of weeks ago, James Widerer that once a wood workshop noticed that the toast tongs were too thick. So I did all, all with the bandsaw and then end up at the sander. And I started on Tuesday, so I was working all through Tuesday morning, Thursday morning, and this morning, Friday morning, and prepared all together 60 toast tongs so far during this week. Hi, I'm Vanessa, and I work in the pottery here at Camp Hill. The pottery at the moment is residing in one of the homes, so we've created a studio in the basement. So behind me, we have some shelves that were made in the wood shop, displaying products that we made down here in pottery. So we make a lot of coffee cups and juice cups. They're um, a big seller. The store wants them, the fairs want them. And we have Sandra's collection. She has so many different styles of bowls. Um, the, the shorter bowl was actually inspired by a companion that we support here that needed that shallower bowl. And I have some individuals that enjoy the, the raw process of just making a piece. And then once they're done, it comes to me and I polish and I clean it and get it ready for final production. I have some folks that will not work with the clay, but they love painting. So they'll take that polished piece and paint it once it comes out of the kiln. So it's, it's such a, a joint effort on everyone's part. There's something for everyone in pottery, which is really nice. <laughs> Sandra's been coming down to pottery for 14 years. So she helped build the pottery up from nothing when they started it years ago. Um, her technique, she's perfected it to the point where her pieces get made and sold. They're requested for like silent auctions and tribute dinners. Everyone knows a Sandra bowl. You go to the store, you'll see a biography of Sandra on the wall as well as her bowls displayed. She's proud of her work. She loves when her family come to the fair. You know, they, they'll buy stuff and she, she just, that's what she'll talk about. She'll talk about the next time they come and she'll focus on projects for them. And when something just comes out, wow, that'll be with us for my sister or that's for my mom. So she, she loves to show off her work. She's very proud. I live at Chinese house. I live with my parents. I come from my Toronto. I come here 13 years. What's your favorite part? My press bowl, the Chinese hat. I like it so much. Yeah. Yes. I make stuff for the fair. I make it for the store for Christmas, once a year. 
I buy one for my parents for Christmas. I listen to music, just relax, I do my work. Our community will return after the break. We now return to our community. I think there are many people, not only people with disabilities, who benefit from a rural environment and benefit from being together with animals. I think animals can bring a sense of peace, and particularly cows give a sense of, of peace to people, especially if they are restless or uncomfortable in themselves and need that outlet of being outside and with something that, that is a very trusting animal and an animal they can trust. My name is David Kidd. Uh, I look after the farm program here at Camp Hill Communities. We're just outside the barn here with the uh, home of the cows and the horses. Our Scottish Highland herd has become a big highlight in the place. The main feature of Highland cattle that really makes them stand out is their very long shaggy fur and their long horns. My name is Robin Rich and I'm here outside the barn at Camp Hill and I have Chester here with me on this lovely, somewhat breezy October afternoon. Chester is a quarter horse. He was uh, donated. So we, we started the horse program and then uh, six months or so later we got, and this is, this is Chester here. Come here boy. And then we got a pal for Chester, which is Prancer, who was so kindly donated by Sharon and Dean Davidson. And Prancer is a registered Canadian horse. Uh, which is our Canada's national breed. We are hoping to have people riding horses next summer. We are preparing Prancer, our, our Canadian horse, for riding. We're kind of focusing on her as probably the, the first horse that will be ridden. So I was riding her, getting her uh, really super great with turning uh, leg aids, standing still, which is going to be huge, well mounted, getting off and on a number of times, getting off and on from the opposite side a number of times flapping around um, and this is all a process of getting the horses used to any sudden movement. We are helping the horses to become more confident in, in as many situations as possible to prepare them for uh, being ridden by people who haven't ridden before, not only haven't ridden before but maybe um, you know have some balance issues. We're just trying to recreate that scenario as much as possible so the mounting is huge and then this, all the, you know, making commotion around the horse, uh, just doing tons and tons of that. So that's the groundwork that I was doing a little bit of, but our focus is the, is the riding portion. And um, yeah, we're, so we're just trying to get our equine friends ready for that. My name is Jeff Allward. Um, I'm the day program lead here at Camp Hill, and I'm also the quality assurance coordinator. We are currently located in the Mosaic Studio um, which is the center of our day program here in Barrie. Uh, it's a very large building with multiple rooms and multiple uses. Uh, we have a painting room, we have a ceramics room, and currently where we are now is the weaving room. Behind me some examples of uh, hand weaving projects that our participants have started. Uh, these are uh, simply recycled bike wheels and we use yarn for spokes and the weaving is just a hand over hand process and it's a very simple way to introduce people to textile arts. Most of the day program um, we, we do focus on arts and crafts and, and very practical things but the other element which is just as important is the social aspect learning to uh, you know respect others learning manners uh, learning how to function within a group setting so with the day program, currently we have uh, almost 20 participants from outside of Camp Hill, people that live with their families. And then we have a number of people from within Camp Hill, our own residents who join in the program. So during a given week, we can have up to um, 30 unique individuals that come through the program. So on any given day, uh, our social, our, our main focal point is our common meal together, which takes place at noon in a house located on uh, Toronto Street, which is only a couple of blocks away. And it's uh, not uncommon to have uh, 12 to 15 people around the table. Uh, on a busy day, we've had as many as 22. It becomes a very uh, social environment. Um, people learn how to uh, engage in, with each other and uh, assist each other uh, based on uh, ability, You know, whether it's serving food or helping clear dishes or that type of thing. Hello, my name is Andrew. I 
use my iPad to communicate. Sorry about the banging, we are busy at work. I have coming to Campville for one year. I like to do pottery. I like to paint studio. I like hang out with my friends and co-workers. Hello, uh, my name's Ivan Hurley. I find Camp Hill has been one of the best companies I've been working with and lived with because they just have a good family vibe with them. And they also have, in general, made my life better because they helped me get into college and I also got my own apartment thanks to them. I hope I could just help out more with them. I like to give back to a community that has given me a lot to uh, hope for. Doing the crafts was a, a, a wonderful way to open up people's uh, lives and minds to new things. The beauty of it was that there was never an end point to learning. People always can learn, no matter uh, where they're at in their particular stage of development, learning is always possible. We just have to learn how to help them learn. Well, the wonderful thing about working in the world of social work is that it always changes. It's always developing. It really doesn't get boring. And you, you are just constantly learning and working with new social forms and, and new ways of trying to help people grow and develop and be themselves. And it's, it's just been great to have to constantly be changing and uh, transitioning and holding on to that sense of community as opposed to just creating a very static uh, lifestyle in which everybody just grows old together. <laughs> we had all these lovely, very energetic children and youth that we started out with. And we were energetic and youthful too. <laughs> and then we've just all grown up together. We've grown up from being in a children's world to being in an adult world from a school world to a village world to a farm. And as we watch each other age and we see all the changes in all of our lives, whether it's health, we've lost family members, we've, we've really shared a lot of life experience together. And our bonds go very deep. Producer, director, camera, sound engineer, Cameron Stamper. First assist, Andrea Dent. Second assist, Michelle Oliveira. Editors, Cameron Stamper, Sebastian McKenzie. Integrated Describe Video Specialist, Ron Rickford. Narrator, Jim Van Horn. Special thanks, Kathy Downs and Camp Hill Crew. Regional Content Specialist, Karen McGee. Senior Producer, Jennifer Johnson. Director of Production, Karen I. Director of Programming, Brian Perdue. VP Programming and Production, John Melville. President and CEO, David Arrington. Copyright 2018, Accessible Media, Inc.